Welcome everyone. You're watching Coronavirus in Context. I'm Dr. John White, the Chief Medical Officer at WebMD. We've been seeing a lot of reports about vaccination rates going way up. So it's no coincidence that new cases and deaths are going way down. But not everyone is benefiting equally from vaccinations. Just as we saw with cases, people of color are being disproportionately impacted. So to help shed some light in terms of what we need to do to address the issue of equity, the issue of education, as we talk about vaccine distribution, I've asked one of the best experts around. Please welcome Karen Jones. She's the president and CEO of the National Caucus and Center on Black Aging. Karen is also a convening member of the COVID-19 Vaccine Education and Equity Project, a national coalition of more than 200 patient, provider, and public health organizations that have come together to advance public education and equity around COVID-19 vaccines. That's a long introduction, but I wanted to get it in. Welcome, Karen. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, let's start off and explain to our viewers what do we mean by equity? Everyone is throwing that term around. Is it disparity? Is it equity? What are we trying to do as it relates to vaccines? Well, in terms of vaccines, it means access and equal access. Uh, I can just tell you that early on, uh, the impact of this virus on the African American community and actually communities of color were, you know, horrible. Uh, and that's as a result of our longtime neglect of uh, communities having access to quality health care. Uh, when you have communities that suffer from chronic disease, uh, who have uh, not had the uh, opportunity to, to have insurance, or either they're underinsured, uh, then this is what you get. Uh, you know, they always say that when America catches a cold, uh, communities of color get pneumonia. And that's as a result of, again, them not having access to the quality health care, not just access to a clinic or an opportunity to go get your blood pressure taken or what have you. But we mean access to making sure that all their health needs are addressed. And it's not based on costs. It's not based on if you have insurance. It's based on that every human has a right. Uh, it's not a privilege, a right to quality health care. So we know when it came to COVID infections, people of color were disproportionately impacted, partly because of those chronic diseases that you mentioned, a higher incidence of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, but also because they were also frontline workers. But when the manufacturers developed the vaccines, there was a, a better commitment, to be honest, than usual in enrolling people of color. But now that the vaccine is out, we're seeing there's lower uptake in communities of color. The percentage of whites compared to their population is higher in, in terms of the Caucasian community, less so in the black and brown communities. Why is that? Is it an issue of access? Is it an issue of education? What's going on? It's always an issue of access. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I was very, very concerned early on when we were dealing with the hesitancy uh, conversation uh, that they kept talking about, particularly in the African American community, that there would be some hesitancy to taking the vaccine. Uh, totally understood that we in our community are very reluctant on, on processes like vaccine. And it goes far beyond the Tuskegee project, which everyone talks about. But it also talks about uh, just medical experimentation that has occurred uh, going back to slavery uh, uh, to now. And so there is always some reluctance. And then there was concern, and it wasn't limited just to communities of color, was concerned about the rapidity, how quickly they were getting the vaccine developed. Because everyone knows it takes a while to get a medication or a vaccine approved through the process uh, and clinical trials. Were they going to be include and be diversive of different communities? Were they going to include different people? So there were just so many concerns. However, uh, what we found as we went along is, is that the hesitancy was 
we believe used as a way of not sending uh, the vaccine to communities uh, where, because they felt like the demand wouldn't be there. And so, well, why send it, you know, it has a shelf life. Why send it to communities if they're hesitant? Let's send it to communities where we we don't know that. So there were fewer vaccines being distributed. We believe that. I don't have any documentation. Right. I'm yeah. just saying the discussion mm-hmm. around many places on why isn't a vaccine site set up in this community when we know they've been impacted the most. And all they would say is, well, you know, we thought they might be hesitant. Well, no, that was not the case. So we were very concerned about that. That has totally changed now. Uh, We know that uh, they they engage churches, they engage uh, senior centers, they engage places where people know and where people knew that there were trusted leadership, trusted organizations that they believed in. And so any hesitancy or concern about the vaccine was pretty much eliminated for a lot of people. Through education. Through education, it is the most important thing. And it, and what we've learned through, through not only through COVID is obviously we it has put a spotlight on inequity. We know that. But it's also then given us an opportunity on how we can address uh, making sure that people have the information. Information is power. And if you give people information, then they can be advocates for their own health and they can make the right decisions. And so right now, we see a great number of our African-American seniors really uh, wanting to take the vaccine. And the only problem they had was, I don't have transportation. I don't know how to navigate the appointment process. I don't have internet. I mean, those were the the barriers. But now we've had uh, organizations, sororities, fraternities, church groups who have really stepped up and make sure that those kind of barriers are out of the way. Now we've got to work on younger people who, uh, you know, as you know, all young people think they're immortal. And so we've got to make sure that they get the message and feel, you know, know the importance that it's not about just them, that it's about their loved ones and their community. So access is getting better? Because I have to tell you, I get frustrated when I hear the common statistic, everyone lives within five miles of a pharmacy. Well, if you don't have a car, you don't have public transportation, you don't have an Uber card, an app, five miles is pretty far. Uh, And in some areas, particularly in rural communities, they're starting to bring the vaccine to the people that live in those areas, as opposed to saying, you come to me. Is that helping address issues of access? It is helping. And I'm, I must say that I think there are so many organizations and groups who have really taken the task on of, 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 of knowing that they've got to go to where people are. And if they know people have, have a hard time getting to a doctor's office when they have a cold, you can imagine that they can't get to where there are vaccine sites who may, you know, those things. So we're, we're addressing those things. But what our organization, the COVID-19 Vaccine Education and Equity Project, we wanted to make sure that people had information. So there were, there were no barriers in terms of wor- are worrying about, well, I'm, I'm, we want to make sure they wanted to get the vaccine. So we focus very hard on making sure information was given to as many trusted organ- leaders, uh, communities, organizations, so that people would have the information and that we wouldn't have the problem uh, so much as uh, not wanting to take it, but how do I get to it? And so I think that's been a really good job on that. Now we've got a long way to go. Uh, we know that we've got, we still have to reach a lot of people. And with now the um, elimination in so many states of not wearing masks and what have you, some people may say, well, everybody else is vaccinated, so I don't really have to get it. That's not the case. And so we've got to continue our education process and getting people information so that they know, and so that we can really move out of this and really move back to some normalcy. And you say information is power. But let's be honest, there's a lot of misinformation out there. So how do we help viewers that are trying to become informed, trying to educate themselves, figure out what is accurate information and what's just bunk that's, you know? Just not true. Well, it's difficult. It's difficult because we are going against social media. 
where, you know, there are no limits to what anybody can put on there. Uh, early on, like this time last year, we were answering questions like, no, coronavirus uh, was not caused by 5G. No, coronavirus was not created in a lab and specifically put in certain communities. And so we've had to deal with all of those kinds of misinformation. But again, that's where trusted leaders and working with trusted organizations and churches and things people go to and, and get their information. That's why it's important to empower them with the information. And I think we've done a really good job of reaching out and expanding our networks. Uh, I know for NCBA, we work very hard to work obviously in senior uh, uh, areas, but now we are really looking more intergenerational and we wanna make sure that people understand that as they age, they want to age healthy. So we got to start young. You don't wait until you're 50, decide that you got to eat right, exercise, get your vaccines, do all that. You got to start early and start planning those so that when you get to be an older adult, you're healthier and that you're able to maintain your, you know, your good health. Storytelling is important. It's important to understand why someone decided to get a vaccine. I know you were hesitant about getting the vaccine and here you're involved in the issue, you're educated, you're informed. Tell us your story, Karen, about your hesitancy and why you ultimately decided to get vaccinated. Yeah, well, um, a year ago, I had publicly stated I was not going to get the vaccine. Uh, I felt like, uh, and I must tell you, it was a little bit of my own uh, political beliefs that uh, the, you know, this talk about getting a vaccine done in such a hurry and, you know, the whole thing, that, that concerned me. And so I said, well, and if I do change my mind, I'm going to wait and see how it affects other people and what had. And so I was very, very hesitant. And then I said, um, let me educate myself. And as I would do with anything, and I started educating myself, and then I got together with uh, Sue, and uh, we talked about it, and I got together with everybody else, and we then formed this uh, uh, coalition, uh, which has now grown to over 200 uh, organizations, which, again, expands our network across the country. And once I got the information, once I followed the clinical trials and made sure that there was a diverse participation in those clinical trials, uh, once we followed the approval process and we saw how uh, you know, no, the gold standard was met, uh, there were no shortcuts, uh, then I was very, very comfortable with it. And I was one of the first to try to get in line to get my vaccine. And I wanted to make sure that the people that I care about, uh, the people I love and the people in my community who I serve, that they had that same information. Well, Karen, thank you for sharing your story and sharing information about what you are doing, what the National Caucus and Center on Black Aging is doing, as well as with your work. And I wanna thank the COVID-19 Vaccine Education and Equity Project. To learn more about their work and for free resources in both English and Spanish, visit covidvaccineproject.org, or you can follow them on Twitter at COVIDVXProject. There you can learn more about their campaign called Count Me In, and you might even see some familiar faces. And if you're saying, and I hope you are, Count Me In for COVID-19 vaccination, be sure to share why and submit your photo at covidvaccineproject.org slash count me in. Karen, thanks again. Thanks for all you're doing. And I hope to talk to you more about the work that the council is doing. Thank you so much for having me and everybody get vaccinated.